He's like, come find me, I'm lying here bleeding and helpless. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Game of Thrones House of the Dragon. We're now on to episode three, which is called Second of His Name. So the last episode had a lot go down, but the big events I think were one that King Viserys was getting a lot of pressure from his council to remarry quickly and produce another heir, even though Rhaenyra has been named as the heir to the throne. They said basically as an insurance policy, he should try to have more heirs to make sure House Targaryen stays on the throne. But really, after a conversation with Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra starting to understand that what they really want is to have another male heir so that when the time comes to put a new heir on the throne, they can put a male heir on the throne. And I think Rhaenyra starting to understand that she's more of a placeholder than an actual heir, at least in the eyes of the council and possibly of her father. So she's kind of got that to chew on, despite the fact that she managed to defuse what would have potentially been some infighting between her uncle and her dad by getting back the dragon egg. Outside of that, we see that Corliss uh, had his own proposal he gave to King Viserys as far as how to stabilize the realm as well as hoping to kind of pull a little bit of favor with him to help him take care of this issue that's happening on the docks that is directly affecting his shipping business but it was rejected obviously and both of his proposals, both the help on the with the security as well as the marriage proposal. And now Corliss is feeling like he's not being respected and he decided to go a little bit more covertly by approaching Prince Damon and saying, hey, we've got a mutual interest situation here. You know, you don't like what King Viserys is saying. I don't like what King Viserys is saying. So if we work together, potentially we can serve each other's interests. You help me get rid of these, you know, this issue on the docks and I will help support you in your challenge for the throne. And then, with all of this talk of marriage and heirs, we see that King Viserys announced that he's going to be marrying Alicent Hightower, which finding out how old she's supposed to be is highly disturbing. Unfortunately, throughout the episode, it seemed like they were giving him the choice of two evils and he thought he chose the lesser of those two. It's still wrong and gross, but it is what it is. So Renera also has that to deal with that her best friend and peer is soon going to be her stepmother. So we'll have to see how she really does take that because we saw initially that she seemed up set, but we'll have to see if she just accepts the status quo or figures out a way to kind of challenge it. I do feel a bit for Allison in this situation because she is just trying to please her father really when it comes down to it, but we'll see whether or not uh, having a crown on her head affects her or changes her in any way. So... Like I said, lots of things in, going on, a lot of different chess pieces in motion. We were also introduced to a character who they call the Crab crab Feeder, I believe it is. And he had a very interesting face mask. So hopefully we'll get to see a little more of him and what he's up to and what his whole point and purpose is for feeding all these people who is crabs. That didn't come out the right way, but y'all know what I mean. All right, I'm about to jump into this episode, but before I do, this is your first time on my channel. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome. I do reactions here to shows like this. So if you're interested in seeing more of that, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you'll know when I do more reactions to this show as well as many others. And if you like this video, I'd also appreciate it if you showed some love to the like button as well. It just helps a girl out. And the same goes for those of you who've been here before. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back. Please join the fam. We're almost to 10K, guys. Let's just do it. All right. That out of the way, guys. Let's get into the episode right about now. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I'm choking on a very dry cookie. That's what he said. No, 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 please! Ah! Ah! Your mother and bastard father! Ah! Ah! You know, I actually give him props because, you know, he's, he's talking smack right to the end. I feel like this is seafood revenge, you know? I eat a lot of seafood. I feel like the crabs would come for me. Ah, speaking of flames. You may have crabs, but do you have a dragon? Why are you, why are you crying now? Like you're already nailed, sir. Save me! I was about to say he's probably gonna kill you. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny, but it kinda is. I mean, chances are you weren't gonna survive anyway. That was a mercy. Not gonna lie, I'm glad we're getting this so early. We had to get what? Wait till season six before we got this in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Dracarys, all them bastards. Woo! Burned him right out his boots. I'm gonna feed you to your own crabs. Where are you? Coward. You're shooting fire at a dragon? 
Okay. Good shot. Maybe you should have gone for the archers, a little, little fire that direction. I guess Damon forgot that he's not as invincible as his dragon is, and even dragons aren't invincible, as we learned in the last series. <laughs> and you have my nose, don't you? Two years old, and already our boy has... Oh, killed. we've got a time jump. It only remains for Viserys to name him heir to the throne. I wouldn't be so sure. I don't know that his grace sees it so clearly. Then it lies yes. with you to All make right. him see it. The matter of the Stepstones is regrettably urgent. It's been three years. It can wait another three days. I mean, it's the baby's birthday that he's not gonna even remember. Come oh, she's pregnant again. Ugh. Can someone tell me where in the seven hells Rhaenyra might be? <laughs> she's um, like, I'm reading with my personal con my personal concert going on. She has no interest in her siblings, thanks. Your Grace. Did I say to stop? She's like, he's like, queen, princess. Queen, princess, oh, I'm trying to get the poor man beheaded. You are to stay by order of the princess. The queen commands you to leave the godswood at once. I knew she was gonna pull that rank at some point. I mean, his hands did need to break though. He looked like he was in pain. Is it the king's command? Yes, but it- Then at once, your grace. But it needn't be. None of it needs be this way in truth, Rhaenyra. It does. This is really weird. And you just pulled rank in front of her. This is weird, man. You know it's weird. Don't act like it ain't weird. It's not so bad. The days are long, but Egon came quickly and without fuss. She's like, no thanks. I think I'll wait till I'm actually fully grown. And you have duties. As I am ceaselessly reminded. I'm sorry? As I am ceaselessly reminded. That's need right. I didn't stutter. No one's here for me. Exactly. They're there for your precious son. Can't have it both ways there, Viserys. You can't say she's the heir and then you see how the whole world only cares about a little brother. If I were her, I would get drunk at every public occasion so that they never invited me out again, personally. Why are you looking at her like that, creepy? You're way too old. Damon made his choices, Lady Kira. The princess was more suited to the royal. He's made a mess and the king must put an end to it. Send fleets and men and clear out the triarchy for good. That pug is hideous! Lord Jason Lannister. Ew! Run! 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 It's fine hunting ground, but the best sport is to be found at Castle Rock, near my home. Oh, really? The rock is thrice the height of the high tower in Old Town, taller still than the wall in the north. Am I supposed to be impressed? On a perfect day, one could see clear across the sunset sea. It must be quite something. Mm, I don't have a dragon pit, of course. Ew! The way he's just sizing her up like meat. I'd do anything for my queen. Or lady wife. She's like, I'm going to vomit this wine right back into the cup. Flung from every corner of the realm. Marriage proposals all. And I have tried often to discuss it with you. But you've refused me at every turn. Really? You want to fight about this here? Even I do not exist above tradition and duty, Rhaenyra. Uh, excuse me, Your Grace. Is this the place? It's like, we, we all gonna listen, just so you know. <laughs> Princess, slow down! She doesn't want to. Princess! She knows how to ride clearly, sir. Leave her be. Was I named heir to the Iron Throne, so that I might only further raise the standing of a Lord of Castle Rock? You want me to kill him? Oh, please. That'd be amazing. Make it look like an accident. Oh, you're joking. How lucky you are to have a say in your own life. Right. Many in the realm would gladly trade positions with you, Princess. No, they wouldn't. Not if they knew what it entailed. Only because none of them has ever held my position. Period. Period. I hope you get bitten, King, and it doesn't heal. I mean, I get what he was saying, but just because you weren't strong enough to stand up for yourself as far as a new wife doesn't mean you have to force it on your daughter. It's like Viserys just keeps vacillating between actually using his backbone and forgetting he has one. I had this forged in the Golden Gallery in honor of Prince Aegon. What is he gonna do without it too? It's as if the seven themselves have blessed this day. Thank you. 
We are generous. He's so fake. He's like if Jamie were more of a douche. Do you think that Haas Targaryen wants for strength? If someone offered you more dragons, would you not take them? Do you have dragons? Right. No, you have money, as usual. That's it. If you were to name young Avon heir, uh, your grace. Yeah, what and everyone expects. I, be doing that? I had assumed. Yeah. As usual. Ass. Assumed. I, I, I did not decide to name Rhaenyra my heir on a whim. All the lords of the kingdom would do well to remember that. Mm. AKA, shut your damn mouth. Drink your gross wine. Sit yourself down. She'll do as you command. Or will she? It is not my wish to command her. I want her to be happy. I believe that. Otto's like, I don't care about my children's happiness at all. Who do you have in mind? Damon. Prince Egon. Who? I know it happens, but who? I just turned two, Otto. Yeah. It's for any of us. I agree. It's, it's laughable because it's so insane. Let us speak no more of it. Yeah, but you you will because you've planted the seed. It's funny that like, I like that they keep showing that Viserys hates being a king so much. He did not ask for this honor and he does not want it. And that the weight of that crown is crushing him. And I have no doubt that a lot of this that he's going through right now is because of Rhaenyra pulling away from him. King Jaehaerys ruled over half a century of peace while his children drove him to the edge of madness. His daughters in particular. Kids do that. It is tradition, Your Grace. Aw, this guy's kind of a soft heart. We don't hate him. It would seem to me the best match for Rhaenyra is the son of the sea snake, Selena. Oh, yeah, I thought about that. And he is the heir to the wealthiest house in the realm. And it's a little, only a little less gross than marrying her own brother. He drunk drunk. I think he appreciates that it's actually advice for once that's coming from a place that makes sense for him and not some personal gain. I forget that guy's name, but both times he's given him advice, it's been about like what would actually be good for Viserys and Targaryen house and not just something to prop himself forward, so. I don't like this lighting, I don't like it. Oh my God, you got taken out by a pig. He's going back for seconds. <laughs> Had it. <laughs> Who are we picturing is that boy right now, girl? When Rhaenyra was a child, I saw it in a dream. Oh, do you talk? I saw that vision again, night after night. But it never came again. Maybe because it was Rhaenyra. You thought it was a boy, but maybe it was actually a girl. What if I was wrong? About? Clarify about Rhaenyra, about the remarriage. That's a very broad statement. No more wine for you. A little late, but thank you. That man is under a lot of pressure and he has no idea how to handle it. And I can't even trust Alison because she's under her father's control. You've been raised by a manipulator your whole life. You pick up some things whether you want to or not. You may not be white, no grace. Things a big lad. He's like, I went through all of this and you'd even get me your special stupid stag. <laughs> None of these prophecies are working out for you, Viserys. It's interesting they keep bringing up the dream thing though. I'm wondering if he's got some warg in him too. He really can't afford to get cut. Put a bit to your left. This is embarrassing, the performance anxiety. I can't. Yeah! Oh, this is horrible. God, you could have made it quicker. Poor, poor stag. Seriously, humans just do the most messed up stuff for no reason at all. You didn't go home the whole night. You're such a bad girl, Rhaenyra. But I appreciate it. There's the stag they were looking for. I said it, didn't I say Rhaenyra was gonna get it? Actually, no, we've already seen an animal die unjustly. Let's let the stag live. That's why Rhaenyra is supposed to rule. I mean, the boar came looking for trouble, so it got the smoke it asked for, but that stag was minding his business. 
<laughs> He's like, I like you. Did you enjoy the hunt, Your Grace? Well enough. The way that he says Your Grace so patronizingly. If Rhaenyra were to step over Aegon to ascend the throne, the realm would tear itself apart. Okay. Rhaenyra would be a good queen. It wouldn't matter if she were Jaehaerys himself, born again. What's so great about Jaehaerys? Other than his weird-ass name. Aegon will be king. Maybe. You must guide Viserys towards reason. He'll never find it on his own. Still ever the puppet, Allison. Lame. I was, I was hoping we might discuss something. Man never gets a moment's peace, even with a hangover. I do believe that Rhaenyra will marry your grace. But she must believe it is her choice to do so. Allison speaks sense when she's actually speaking her own words. May I? Just a official political matter. Go off. I don't actually care. I know this whole king thing is in name only. If I not provide Damon and Corley's sucker, what will that say? Just realize he lost two fingers now. He's a good man. He loves then I pose a simpler question. Stop people pleasing. Is it better for the realm if the crab feeder thrives or is vanquished? Sometimes you need the simplicity of a young mind. Because you mean to replace me. Yep. With Alison Ty Tower's son. Oh, not my brother. You might as well peddle me for what you can. A mountain stronghold or a fleet of ships. As rulers, we must marry for advantage. To forge alliances and bolster our strength. This is true. I will not live forever. I wish to see you contented. Happy even. You think a man would do it? Right? What would you have me do? If it was for advantage, you would have wed Lena Valarian. Period. Oh, she's smarter than you think. As to your match, make it yourself. Search him out. Hmm. Find one that pleases you. Really? As I did. You just went into creepy territory again. It's the best offer you're gonna get. But I swear to you now, on your mother's memory. Oh. You will not be supplanted. Hmm. I want to believe you. But that backbone of yours be real wobbly. I know he means it, but he got that he got that woman in his bed. I ain't gonna call her a woman, that's being very generous, but it's uh Samson was taken down by Delilah, if you take my meaning. It doesn't take very much. Men can be weakened, especially in that area. An offering of flesh to bait the crab. Who? Dragon returning! Where dragons ain't out here trying to blow their fire for fun for you losers. He at least is fighting this war. What role have you played in this council, uncle, other than master of complaints? Enough. <laughs> that would be my title. I'm the master of complaints. If you do not seize control of this war, my lord, the crabs will soon dine on all of us. Anything to say there, pretty boy? Grace Viserys Targaryen. First of his name, King of the Andals, the Rhoynar, and the First Men. God, Lord the announcement alone just takes 50 minutes. Get to the message. Look at the, look at the guy in the background like, I may or may not have sent for help. <laughs> oh, we got a little bit of a lip tremble. Had a feeling. He's the messenger. Oh, Damon, you're such a little bitch. Know that it is not my desire to see you fail in your cause. Yeah, that's the word that pissed him off. I shall pray nightly to the gods for your safe return. Yeah, that was a very condescending letter. I mean, he deserves it, but Damon being the petulant jerk that he is, he's not gonna wanna hear that. All he's hearing is that his big brother thinks he can't do it on his own. Well, guess he's doing the sacrifice. Hmm. This is either the ploy or he's actually saying, screw my brother, I'd rather surrender, let the crab feeder do what he wants. <laughs> he's like, is there a dragon? Don't trust you. You are hideous. I feel like this guy knows something's up, but he doesn't know what. If Damon's plan works, I gotta give him props. Don't 
Don't get comfy with that blade. I hope you actually accomplish it, Damon. You little shit, but I do admire the balls of this takes. Ooh, he fast with it though. Damon said, no, I've had enough. I was gonna give up, but then my brother pissed me off again. Thank God for y'all Stormtrooper aim. This guy's a bitch, hey? Doesn't want to fight on his own. Damon, ooh, not messing around. Why are you guys coming out in waves? You probably would have taken them down already if you all came out. Yeah, he took, yeah, personal with that one. He was gonna get hit inevitably, only because he stood still. You think with all that armor, they get to a point where they learn to like get things that are arrowproof? That's what they wanted. Come out, all of you, all of you, come out of the cave. That's what we want. Get arrogant. He's like, come find me. I'm lying here bleeding and helpless. But his eyes are on the horizon, so I got hope. Or does he have to raise his sword for like the word? Oh wait, aren't dragon riders supposed to be like flame resistant? I keep forgetting that Daenerys doesn't get burned by flames. Woo! Burn bitches. Burn. <gasps> I didn't know he could ride dragons. Y'all thought it was only Damon, huh? Oh, we like him. I like this Valerian boy. I've always wanted to see like a brother on one of these dragons or a sister. This might get me happy. Notch where? Burn, bitches. Bye. Notch that. You were on the wrong side of the war, my friend. Ooh, that felt like it hurt. <laughs> Dave is like, okay, that was actually pretty impressive. Oh, where are you going, you little bitch? Come back. If Damon kicks your ass with two arrows in his ass, okay. Mm, there's another more majestic than those dreads flying in the. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He better not die, by the way. I'm not. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> please don't kill Corliss. I'm begging you, please. Please don't do it. One of them is about to die. I can tell. There's too many close-ups. What's he dragging? What does he have? Oh, is that Damon? Did Damon just finish it? You better hold that, whatever that is. Looks like half a body. You see, he was just a bitch. Cause Damon had two whole ass arrows in him and he still killed you. Bowels out and air thing. Show them, show, his men, show the men. So they'll stop fighting, quickly. Now that is an image. That is an image. Well. If we could take a Polaroid and send that to his dear brother. <laughs> I think that was a message. See, you could have used that message out of beating up the poor man who just came and brought you a letter, my friend. Even though that beating was really for whatever, the, the guy who sent for help. You ain't gotta do all that. Woo, okay guys, that was episode three and that was fire at the end. Oh my God, that was an epic battle scene. Okay, I see you. This is the Game of Thrones I remember. We typically didn't get these kind of level of battle scenes until like later in the seasons back with the original show. And even then, I don't think we got something like this until around season four or so. So yeah, um, HBO be flexing that budget early, but I ain't complaining. I ain't complaining. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, woo, where to start? The first half of this was a little on the slower side, definitely more around the politics of Game of Thrones. We had Rhaenyra seeing where she's at after this, uh, the whole marriage situation. And we got a 
time jump, which I didn't expect, but makes sense. It looks like it's three years past the last episode. There is a male born heir, which is what everyone predicted might happen. And Agen, which which is a name that we have heard before. So I'm assuming he probably survives, but I honestly can't remember. <laughs> it's been so long. I literally need to go and look at the whole family tree to remember who's who. But anyway, there is another son. Uh, so there is a son, firstborn son of the king that survived. And we also have... Allison pregnant with baby number two, which very well could be another son. Rhaenyra has not taken this well, which I anticipated. It's a very crazy situation. It's weird. I mentioned all the reasons for that at the beginning of this, uh, this video. This is her peer that's now calling herself queen. And as we saw a couple times in this episode, pulls rank as a queen. I don't necessarily blame Allison because as a queen, you can't let people walk all over you either, right? If she wasn't taking her station prop um seriously it would definitely come back to hurt her more than not plus she has to protect her children now uh because they are vulnerable being the next prince and possibly princes in the realm but you can see that she's definitely conflicted this is still her friend this is still someone she has love for and she understands where Rhaenyra is coming from she understands the hurt that Rhaenyra is going through as a result of these children being born and this really weird situation but like both of them are in that situation and I feel like that's the one minor criti critique in this whole situation I would say for Rhaenyra is that she's not really trying to see anybody else's side of the story here she's very much like it's all about me and what's bad you know what the bad things that are happening to me but if she had a little bit of empathy she'd realize that Alicent had literally basically no say in this matter and that she's also in a very weird and uncomfortable position as well like they could be potentially helping each other out more than not but I understand that Rhaenyra is very much like her uncle uh, very stubborn very defiant and I, I get it like I don't even think her issue with is really with Alicent so much as what Alicent represents and the fact that this child that was born, she's like, she said, it's already started. Like now that he's born, no one cares about her. Everyone's talking about him. Everyone's just worried about him and what's coming next. And even with the hunt thing, like she's like, I'd rather just stay and read a book. And her dad's like, no, you gotta be there. And she says to her dad pointedly, nobody is here for me. And it's so true. Like no one cared. No one was really asking about her, everything about this boy. And sadly, everything that Hightower said to Alicent in their conversation is true. And that the realm was basically holding their breath until he gave birth to a son. And now that he did that, they're like, okay, good we we almost had a queen right so it sucks um that Rhaenyra was was right but it is what it is and Rhaenyra has every right to be upset about that and process that the way that she can but as I said she could be a little bit more empathetic to the fact that no one's really in a good position here her dad is clearly miserable and he even explained that I thought it was really great to see how he expressed to Allison that he's miserable he really thought that you know naming her as an heir and trying to deal with all of this was going to make things feel better for him but it's not and it has nothing to do even with naming Rhaenyra or him remarrying the real issue I would argue is that he doesn't want to be king <laughs> this man does not want to be king at all all the things to do with king is what he hates doing the man just wants to make his little sculptures and play with his dragons and like just chill that's all he wants to do but he can't and every time he's got to deal with king stuff he gets irrit irritated and irritable so it's a sad situation for him too and I think again if Rhaenyra was a little bit more empathetic she would see that her dad is not liking this and that he does have the best of intentions but she does see like her uncle that he's not a strong man, right? Viserys is impressionable and he is weak when it comes to actually standing his ground. And that is why Hightower pushed his agenda on picking Alicent rather than suggesting there were so many other high houses in the, in the realm that could have provided him with a wife who was older, first of all, and that would also probably been a much more politically advantageous marriage for him as well. Because from what I understand, Hightower doesn't have a lot going on either, like compared to say a Lannister, right? So anyway, we had Rhaenyra in this episode kind of take off and spend some time I'm alone with her Dornish prince. Uh, I really would love if those two got together. I, I wouldn't lie, but I know that there's no way that she can marry him as much as uh, she was told she has a choice today. We all know that that choice is, um, you know, you can choose what you want, but within this confines of what we say is acceptable. But um, I would love if she could marry the Dornish prince, but I have a feeling he's just going to end up possibly being a lover because he is lowborn by Dornish standards um, as well. So um, we'll see what she does with this choice. Of course, he was presented to him that she should potentially marry her. I guess, second or third cousin, which is Corliss's son. At least it looks like um, Corliss's son is closer to her age, so it's not gonna be quite as creepy of a match. It's still gross, but far less gross than her being married off to Jason Lannister, who looked like he was a, definitely a fully grown man and one that was definitely going to treat her terribly. You could just see that he looked at, he was gonna use her for nothing more than you know what. So yeah, interesting to see what happened there. And uh, the moment with the stag, you know, they, they brought up symbolism a lot in this episode and the fact that the father missed out on all of these things that he thought were 
grand symbols of good fortune for him and his son. None of them were happening for Viserys, but they've happened to Rhaenyra. So interesting that they keep showing us that there seems to be a greater plan that Rhaenyra is kind of the one or the one who should potentially be in power. Outside of that, we had the updates on the war that was started. Clearly, Damon took the bait that Corlys put as far as trying to clear up the issue on the steps, have a show of force against them, but they obviously greatly underestimated how strong the crab feeder and these, what is it called? The triarchy were as far as the amount of men that they had and the amount of damage they could do because it turns out they've been embroiled now in a war that's lasted for almost three years. And we see that Viserys has chosen not to get involved. He basically was like, this was not a sanctioned war by me. So I'm going to let them basically do whatever they do. If they win, great. If they don't, it's not my problem. But I love that Allison had to kind of spell it out to him like he was 12 and say to Viserys, like, I understand you're trying to teach these men a lesson about not defying you, but the reason they went to war is a valid one, right? Like Corliss was trying to say that all in the first episode and second episode of how this issue with these basically pirates taking over one of the major trade ports coming into Westeros was a problem. And it was not just a problem, like it was initially a problem, for him because he's a merchant, but it would inevitably become a problem for the realm, right? Because it's not just the Navy, right? Like I think from we, we can under, from what we can understand, Corliss's business, his shipping brings a lot of the goods into <laughs> Westeros, right? If you know how trade works, like you need to get things from like, I'm assuming these are things from Essos and people are shipping things from Westeros elsewhere. Like there's probably a lot of businesses that rely on on that shipping route and they're being interrupted and pirated by this pirate company, right? So he's trying to explain that like, this seems like a small problem at the moment, but it's gonna grow into a bigger one. And again, if people from Essos hear that they can just do whatever they want in Westeros, how long before more start to pop up, show up and think they could just take their chunk of Westeros and do whatever they wanted with it. So Corliss was not wrong in asking for the king to do something about it. But we also found out in this episode that apparently it's an issue that's been around for a while now, that the steps have never been fully in the control of Westeros. So that tells me that probably way back when the, Targary the Targaryens showed up and took over Westeros, that this area probably already had its own ecosystem and the Targaryens simply tried to take over it with force like they do many things. And it's just never quite taken hold because of whatever was going on there. But anyway, that would probably take a lot of digging and a lot of time and effort from the crown, which clearly, as I mentioned before, Viserys has no time for. If it's not something simple, he does not want to do it. <laughs> as the man says, I'm up to my nose and all these scrolls and parchments from all over the realm talking about you and other things that I don't want to do it. Why aren't you helping me? He's the master of complaints, actually, as brought up today. That is one of my favorite titles ever. So that war has been happening. Uh, they were on the brink of losing it. So they needed a Hail Mary. They needed something that was going to drag the entirety of the army out and basically get them susceptible enough to lose and to take out their leader, the crab feeder, who was a weird guy. And considering that he died this episode, it's interesting that we didn't learn anything about him. He never even spoke a word. So it does make me wonder if he actually was the crab feeder, if he was just a representative that was necessary for the, for the war. But it seems interesting that they made such a big deal of showing us his face last episode and then he just died this episode. <laughs> So, and he didn't look very good. He definitely looked like something was, was up with him. So I don't know if we've seen the end of this triarchy leadership, but uh, I do like how Damon handled that Hail Mary at the end. You know, one of the things that was brought out in episode one very clearly was that nobody had seen real battle, right? All these royals, all these big houses, they talked a lot of talk, but they were green as grass, as um, Rhaenyra's put it, and none of them knew true war, true battle. Well, now Damon can say that he's actually battle, you know, he's been battle uh, tested, he's got the scars, uh, he now has that over his brother, at the very least, and many of the nobles now, and the reality is that things like this do garner respect of men and of subjects, like he already had a very loyal company already, but the fact that he was willing to do this, and especially that Hail Mary at the end where he went and literally risked getting killed just to make sure that he could draw everybody out so that their plan could take place. Like that is definitely going to ruffle some feathers and it's definitely going to make people think a lot more about the validity of Damon being a king over Viserys. But as I said, Viserys is not doing too good. His health seems to be continuing to de deteriorate. We'll see what happens because now that there is an heir within Aegon, it does make me wonder. Actually, no, I was going to say the fact that Aegon is alive and 
done well so far. It does kind of weaken Damon's claim, but it kind of doesn't because Aegon is only two. It's going to be a long time before he's going to be old enough to take the throne. And if Viserys was to die while he's still an infant, Damon would have a really strong claim to go for the throne, right? Because yes, there's Rhaenyra's, or Rhaenyra, but we already know how everyone feels about that. So I feel like if he was going to make a move, it'd probably be when he did it is if his brother passes sooner than later. And I think they're definitely heavily indicating that he's not long for this world. So <laughs> we'll see what goes down. It does make me wonder as well what would happen with Alicent because that puts her in an extremely vulnerable position if Viserys dies because she is technically the queen. She become the queen regent, of course, but I feel like she have a lot of pressure from her father as far as what to do from that point forward, because we saw that he's trying to get her to push Viserys to name Aegon as the heir rather than Rhaenyra. So anyway, she's an interesting character in all of this. She definitely is very mature considering all that's happened. But uh, at the same time, as I said, I'm really, I'm still not 100% on where her ambitions lie in this whole situation. I think she's trying to do the right thing. But as I said, you can't grow up with a viper like her father and not pick up a few tricks. I think that was pretty much it for this episode, really, outside of the fact that we had the suggestion that Rhaenyra marry her cousin. Like I said, it's, I hate all the inbreeding, but we all know this is part of the Targaryen line. Yeah, it's just a mess. And I'm not sure how poor Rhaenyra is going to navigate it, but I'm hoping that she's going to have somebody that she can rely on truly at some point because no one in that house is really looking out for her fully. And I think she's realizing that more than ever, which makes her a very pitiable character. But again, the way she handled that boar and handled her business in this episode shows that she's definitely got that same rebellious, strong streak in her like her uncle does. So very interesting episode overall. Really like that ending battle scene. And I am definitely looking forward to the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.